A few weeks ago, I received a request to talk more about symbols. In this tutorial, we will look at how to create them, how to refer to them, and for what purpose you might use a symbol that you have created. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. To be notified about new tutorials, make sure to click that bell button and subscribe. Also, check out the discount links to my courses that I've included in the description of this tutorial. And if you'd like to support the channel, there's a link in the description for how you can do that. Now, symbols came to us via the ES6 standard. So they've been around for some time, but are seldom talked about. That is probably because their application is limited. A symbol is a new primitive type in JavaScript. So just like a number, Boolean string, a symbol has a primitive type of symbol. Now, what a symbol is, is it's a unique identifier that is hidden from the code. You can't display or check the unique ID that is created. So that might beg the question, well, what would you use it for? Well, let's first look at how we create one and some properties of a symbol. Then we will discuss applications. So first, creating a symbol. I'm going to declare a variable here, and then I'm going to set it equal to a symbol. It's as simple as that. Now, something very important to notice here that we don't use the new keyword. New is not a part of the technique used to create a symbol. We do use the uppercase S to create a symbol object, but we don't use the new keyword. So remember that. Now, this has created a symbol. And let's just take a look at it really quick. So I'm going to save that and open up the console so we can just take a look at some things. There we see that it is a symbol object. And if we do to string method here, we basically get the same thing as a string. Now, when we're creating a symbol, there is one parameter that we can include. And this is a description of what that symbol is. So this might be helpful for us in identifying why we've done the symbol or why we've created the symbol. So I'm going to put a description in here. It's a string. And let's just take a look at that same information again. So now you can see it just adds a description is all it does. But that description can be helpful if we're trying to identify what the purpose of the symbol is, why we created it. Because remember, the symbol creates a unique identifier. And as you can see here, we cannot get access to that unique ID. It's a, probably a long string of characters, but we can't see it. We don't know what it is. Right now, the only way we can access the symbol is using the variable. Now, one more thing I want to do here. I mentioned that symbol is a new primitive type. Well, if we do a type of the variable, we get symbol back. And that's the primitive type I'm talking about there. So this is the new primitive type we have in JavaScript, the newest one that's been added in quite some time. So here's how we create a symbol. We can add a description to help us identify what it is. We can see that it is a new primitive type. But what would we use it for? Now, one possible application is inside of an object. Because it has a unique ID, we can use that symbol as the key in a key value pair. And that unique ID would not overwrite another ID that may be a part of that. And something else about this unique ID, it wouldn't show up along with the other keys. And so we could use it to create metadata. Because it won't show up, we could put met metadata in there about the object. And it wouldn't interfere with some of the other properties that we've designated are important. So let's just look at that for, ex for a second. So I'm going to create a new object. And I'll put property. This is a property I care about. We have a name property. 
And now I want to use the symbol as the key to another property. Now, how would I do that? If I type in sim1, it will actually create a property sim1. So the way I do that is with square brackets. I put the sim1 inside of square brackets. And then I do a colon. And now I can add the data that I want to that key value pair. Now, since I'm talking about an application of metadata, let's say we wanted to put a timestamp, date and timestamp of when this object was created. So let me put that in as the data that I want. Okay. There we have our very simple object. Now back here, I'm going to refresh and let's go ahead and take a look at that. Now we can see that there is a symbol in there. Notice it doesn't give us the unique ID. We can't see what that unique ID is, but we can see the data there. However, there's something you should be aware of. Let me jump back here. I mentioned that you don't have access to that property that's added with a symbol. So let's take a look at that. Let's do a for in loop and just take a look and see if we can see what that key is or even what that property is. So there we're going to display the key and then another console log statement to display the value of the key in OBJ. So two console log statements. Let's see what we get. If I come out here and refresh, I get name, that's the first key, and I get the value of Steve. It doesn't show us the second property and that's because that second property is not available to us. However, we could access that property using the variable that contains the symbol. So obj and then in square brackets so we can still get access to the data if we need it. So that metadata is accessible but it's not going to pollute some of the other properties that we may have. And so if we're considering it metadata, we may not want it to pollute some of those other properties. Now, one other way we can see that we're not able to access the property that is designated by the symbol is using object.keys. If I use object.keys and pass in the object, object.keys returns all the keys of an object. What do I get back? I get back an array which is simply one key and that's the name key. I don't get the key that is created with the symbol. So just another example of that. All right, now there is another way to create a symbol that I want to show you. And the second way creates a symbol in a way that we can refer to it. Another way to refer to it instead of just having to use the symbol all the time. So let me show you that because there might be an application for that where you're adding this metadata to a number of different objects and you want to use the same unique identifier. You want to use the same symbol. So let's look at how we would do that. In this case, I'm going to declare a variable. We'll do symbol two this time. Here's how we would create the symbol. There is a for method as a part of symbols. And then inside of that for method, inside of the parentheses, I can pass in a string that will identify the symbol. Now, this isn't a description of the symbol. It's not the same as this up here, as I'll show you in a minute. This is a way to identify it. And so I'm going to call it object data. That's my identifier. Now let's create another object. I commented out the previous one, so I'll just use the same variable here. And we're going to put the same type of data on here. And then we're going to use a symbol, this new symbol we created, symbol 2. And we'll just attach metadata again. So ah, date object. There we go. Oh not semicolon down there. All right. So now we have an object 
with that on. So let's save that and let's take a look at this again. Some different ways to work with this now. So we can still see that object.keys obj is not going to show us that key value pair. We're not going to see that. But we're able to still access this information and get information about it. We can do it the same way we talked about before. So here's symbol two. There's our metadata we talked about. So there's some other ways to identify it. So let's say I wanted to determine what string I use to identify it. Well, I can use a key for method and then put in symbol two and notice it displays that information to me. Now also I can use that same string to create additional symbols that have the same unique ID. So I'm going to do the exact same thing as I did up here. I'm going to use that same text description or text identifier, I should say, this same one here to create another symbol. Now let's see what that does for me. Now if I do symbol to equal symbol three, I get true. Those are the same thing. Also, I can go obj and then in square brackets, symbol three. And it will access that property because those two are the same now. Because I created those two symbols using the same text identifier, those have the same unique ID. So basically, I'm able to store that symbol and access it anytime I need to using that text identifier. And that allows me to then create additional objects and attach the same information, the same metadata using an identifier that I know. So for example, I could use a square bracket scan, but this time I'll do symbol dot four and then inside of parentheses I'm going to do the object data like that and I will set this one equal to new date so this is a new object for me so now let's refresh that I don't know why I keep putting a semicolon at the end there. Let's refresh that. Let's spell it correctly. All right, now notice I can refer to that property using any one of the other symbols I've already created because they refer to, they point to the same symbol because I used the same text identifier. Okay, So that is a way to create symbols and be able to refer to them again using a text identifier and not having to have access to the variable in which you place the symbol. That was what was required for the first technique we used. We had to have access to that variable in order to use it. Here we can have a text identifier that is stored and then we get access to that symbol. So once again, the two applications for using a symbol, one would be to attach metadata to an object that you don't want showing up with the other properties. A symbol will give a unique ID and it allows you to do that to an object. The second application is if you're trying to add something to an object and you don't want the key to conflict with other keys. You want to make sure that it is unique. Well, a symbol will be a unique identifier and it shouldn't conflict with anything else which you already have in that object. So two possible applications and those applications may come together in certain places. Now, if you found this tutorial and symbols helpful, please hit the like button and remember to subscribe. 
Also remember the discount links to all my courses in the description section. Click that bell button to be notified about new releases. I release a new tutorial each week and thanks for watching.